Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're going to go over step number nine in the 80, uh, excuse me, the 64 bit registry version of the tutorial in the help section. So make sure that you get that out. Now I know I kind of went over it in the last one video, and I wanted to apologize to you guys about that last video. I guess uh, that, that guy just caught me on the wrong day. Uh, on some days, I'm more like, you know, hey, you know, go fuck yourself, but, you know, kind of like under my breath, but then there's some days I'm ready to swing back, and I guess he caught me on one of my swing back days. <laughs> I, I do apologize about that video, and if I got anybody upset, I, I send my sincerest apologies to you. But uh, today, I'm actually going to go over what I actually did in that video uh, using the FPU stack to uh, manipulate our value that we want written and things like that also basically this lesson is about compares how and why we need to compare and uh, you know we can discuss several situations in which we use compares and that's mainly the main focus of this lesson is using compares and how to find compares now I would like in a separate video that I'll make later, we'll discuss more about the FPU stack. I'm just gonna give you a very basic rundown of what I'm doing using the FPU stack, but I'm gonna leave links that you can also go to about to give you more information on the FPU stack. Plus later on, I will make a video and we'll discuss the FPU stack in more detail, okay? So but for this lesson, I'm mostly focusing on compares. All right, so bear with me and I'll be right back with you. Okay guys, went ahead and got over here to step number nine and today we're actually going to do the explanations as we go through it this time. But uh, step number nine is basically a little mini game in which you have four players. Uh, two are the heroes and two are the enemies. You see the enemies have a lot bigger health value than the two heroes have. And it is also, I think, taking off less health. It's only taking off one each. And here is taking off random amounts. So, and the goal right here, it says, let's see, uh, your task is to find the code that writes the health and make it so you win the game without freezing your health, okay? So that's what we're going to do, and it does give us some tips that your health is located on a float value, and there are more than one solutions, and they're always no matter what you're trying to do there's always going to be more than one solution okay there are multiple solutions to achieve the same results in any game that you hack okay there is no one way set in stone always keep that in mind all right so i'm going to go ahead and do my normal setup routine click readable and writable because that's just what i prefer and we're going to go ahead and just find one of our players health because it was a float value so let's put it on float and try it again also, let's go ahead and set up this. Uh, when we search for float values, I like using the default. I find that extremes can sometimes miss the value, and I do put it on default. However, I will tick on simple values only. That'll get rid of all your uh, exponential values and these extreme, extremely long values that you don't really need. I believe we found it right there. Let's just check it. And there we go. All right, so now we want to find the others. Now, you can do that several ways. You can just go in each one and search manually. But in most games, the especially where it writes to the addresses, you'll find that health is usually going through what's called a share of opcodes. That means that they're all going through one specific set of instructions or one function. And we can usually find everybody's address that way, which is to me is a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is find out what accesses this address because I like seeing everything that value is going through when we take damage. So let's go ahead and attack Dave. And we can see everything that value goes through. And just quickly again, I've been asked how when I click on what accesses the address, how do I know which one is writing? Now, it's not that way for every single type of uh, assembly that you may be in. Somebody's referred to AT&T being a little different and, you know, which basically Unix and Linux use a lot. But, you know, Cheat Engine that I'm in right now is using Intel Syntax. 
So in this particular situation, whatever is on the left hand side of the comma is always going to be affected by whatever is on the right side of the comma. Okay? And the way it's affected is by the command that's used. So we can see that every single instruction here is using move SS. So we know that we're dealing with the single precision floating point unit, which is, low, is being stored in the XMM registries right now. And that's what we use. And we can see, if you ask of oh, which one is writing, well, actually they're all writing. The, these are all writing addresses, if you can see. It's just that which one is writing to our health, it would be the better question, okay? We can see here that this is writing to the XMMO registries. And it looks like this is our health that's writing to the XMMO registries. So our health is not being manipulated there particular point in time. If you look right here at the middle, the only place our address is on the left, our the XMMO registry is manipulating our health value. So that one would make that our writing address for our health. Okay? So whatever's on this side of the comma is always affected by whatever is on this side of the comma or cheat engine being on an Intium, or excuse me, I'm sorry, an Intel or an AMD processor. Okay, now getting that out of the way, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to that place it's writing to. Actually, let's do this first. Let's do this first. Let me uh, stop that and just kind of move that out of the way. And I, let's bring up <coughs> let's bring up the writing one right quick. Just find out what writes to this address, and it just bypasses all the others and just shows you what's writing to the address. And if you take a look. This is what accesses, this is just what's writing to the address. You'll see it's the same address, okay? Accesses just shows you everything it's going through. Writing just shows you what's manipulating your address or the value at your address, okay? So you can get all this information in this window as well. You'll just get more information. That's the only difference between the two. So we know that this one is writing to our address, so we're showing the dis disassembler. Okay guys, sorry about that. I had to bring up a whole new one, so uh, bear with me just a little bit while I redo everything. So I got back to where I previously was, so I apologize about the inconvenience. So basically what we did is we found our writing where it's writing to our health address, and we click and show disassembler. Come over here, and it brings us to this opcode where it's located at in memory, okay? And we can see here that XMMO is writing to our health address. So that value is being manipulated before it actually gets to it to write to our health address. And we can look up here and see what's kind of going on with the value, how it's being manipulated. And if we take a look up here, we can start up here. We can see that this is our health address right here, which also showed up right here. Remember that? Everything that's happening with the value of our health address shows up in what accesses. Well, we can look right here and see that's the same one, which is just right above where it's writing. So if we look, we can see that it's moving our value into XMM1. Then XMM0 is subtracting a value from our health. So we can see that right here, a subtraction is occurring. And we can see it doing other things, doing a compare, jump at parity, jump at below. But right here, we can see that a value is being moved back into XMM0, and XMM0 is writing that value to our health. So we can see that here is where XMM0 is receiving that value to put into our health address. Kind of helps just to kind of look in different things. Uh, like this see what's actually going on see if you can pick out what's actually going on and it really really will help you in the long run and help you understand assembly a little better now we'll go over what all this APS and SS means on a later date I'll go over that we'll definitely go over it when we start talking about XMM registries and how the computer deals with XMM registries also when we discuss in more detail the FPU stack Okay, so but that will be for a later video. I just don't have time to cram all that information into one video. It's just a lot of information. But for right now, it's not necessary to understand that. Just know that XMM0 is huge registries that's dealing with huge numbers 
Uh, usually it's dealing with the FPU numbers, decimal base values, but it can deal with integers as well. But it, it's basically where your doubles and your floats are uh, being moved and carried around and manipulated before it's stored back into an address, okay? Now, to get back to what we're doing here, all our players, and if you notice just about any game you play, when you find out what's writing to the address, you'll find that usually all the characters in the game, the NPCs or the enemies or the allies and your hero, are all going through the same set of instructions. It's all going through the same set of instructions. So when we write a cheat, like we want it to keep adding two to our hero's values, well, if we don't find some way to separate those two out from our enemies, everybody's going to be going up by two. So we need Dave and Eric to go to that cheat location where it's, you know, increasing the value by two. But yet we need Hal and Kit to always keep subtracting like it's doing now. And the way we can do that is by using comparisons. Well, what do we find? You compare these two outs. Well, there's all kind of things we can do. And I'm not getting into every single way we can compare these people out. Right now, we're just going to be using the dissect data structure. Okay? The dissect data structure, we want to know everything that RBX is pointing to. RBX right now is holding our base address for our health. Okay? Our health is located at offset 08 that we've discussed earlier in the series on what the base address versus the offset is. The offset is the distance away from the base address, okay? Whether it be plus or minus. Our health is located eight bytes away from that. So what we want to do is now we want to find out what all the addresses that are going through that opcode, okay? And there, in a regular game, there could be lots of addresses, not just your enemies, but other things going through it, like uh, item damage things like that, like, you know, breakable items. Believe it or not, when you, like, break furniture or, you know, break a vase or something in the game, that also is using a health value. Believe it or not, they also have their own health values. So it's also good to, you know, try to look at that, too, when you're looking for health, look in areas that, you know, where you have breakable items, things like that, and see if you can also compare those out as well. But for right now, we're just worrying about these two. So what we do is we attack each one of them, make them lose some health to make sure that they go through that opcode and it brings up all the addresses that are being affected by that opcode every time each one takes damage. Now I like going to the dissect data in here. However, you can do it any way you want to. Always know that you want your dissect data to begin at offset zero, which offset zero is the base address. The base address at this point in time is being stored in RBX. So we're going to be looking at everything RBX is pointing to. So let me bring this up, open dissect data, click on the next window. You can name it if you want to. I usually don't. Just click on yes to everything. And here we go. Now sometimes, and I want to iterate this, sometimes uh, dissect data or cheat engine won't get the value types right and some of these offsets may be missing. So it's not 100% accurate on choosing the value types correctly so be aware of that. Some of you may be coming over here and see that you do not have an offset 14. If that be the case you can just go to like offset 10 or another obscure one and double click on it and bring up offset 14 like so. I'm not going to do it, but that's how you do it. Um, I, that's another reason I previously had to bring up another version of the game because it wasn't showing my offset, and I just didn't feel like just showing and explaining everything to you. So I'm just briefly doing it. But right now we do. And there's all kind of ways we can separate our enemies from our heroes. First thing we want to do is we want to put them in two different groups. You can name the groups if you want to or you don't have to, but right now we know that everything is at its base address. If you take a look right here, float value, these are all their health values. And these are the addresses of their health, which is eight bytes away. See that? Alright. <clears throat> 
So let's go ahead and separate Dave, Eric, Hal, and Kit into different groups. We know that Dave and Eric are the heroes. We know Hal and Kit are the computer-controlled enemies. So we want Hal and Kit in separate categories. So we're going to change group new group you can actually label enemies right here if you want to and change group for this one and put it in the enemies category now they are in two different groups we got group one which is our heroes we have a different group which is our enemies and you can see the different color representations and you can go over here to settings and change that I changed my group different to black just so I could see it easier uh, but you can see what all the different color combinations mean. Green means they're equal. Red means they're different. Group equal is all blue. That means all of them are the same regardless of what group they're in. And group different means that the groups are different. They're the same in one group. And the other group is the same in another. However, they're different from each other. Okay? I don't mean to confuse anybody, but... Basically, what you want to do is go look for group differences. Those are the easiest ones, and those are the ones you want to try. Now, sometimes, you know, finding offsets to try out for compares can be a tedious task. We need offsets that are always going to be the same and never change. You don't necessarily need to do that, but that's also for another video where you can do loose compares, but we're not going to talk about that right now. But for right now, mostly the best ones to get are offsets where the values do not change and they are different from each other. Group differences are what we're looking for. As you can see, Dave and Eric share a value at offset 14 of 1. Hal and Kit share a value of 2. They're both, Dave and Eric are in a different group and Hal and Kit are in a different group. They both have different values. Hal and Kit are the same with each other, and Eric and Dave are the same with each other. However, they're, the two groups are sharing different values. Those are usually going to be your best compares, so those are the ones we're going to try. And I would recommend going through the dissect data and finding several offsets that may be different to try out later in case these values change. And that can happen and does happen a lot. But for this scenario, we're not going to worry about it. So we know. Offset 14 is the one we want to use. And what I like to do is just bring up a notepad and I'll put Offset 14. I always put my heroes on the right, what value they're holding, which is 1. And I'll put a dash or group 2 or my enemy's value of what they're holding. And that just that's just my for my personal information. Our heroes are holding 1, our enemies are holding 2 at Offset 14. And that's the one I'm going to use. So we don't need this anymore and we're going to come over here to the writing octet and we're just going to manipulate what's being wrote to everybody's address so we're going to go to tools auto assemble and bring up our AOB injection now before I go any further let me save what I got just in case you know I need to correct myself in certain areas and I, it'll just make the editing process a little easier so I'll be right back Okay, so as you can see, I have not changed anything. I just wanted to save what I had. So we're back. So now we're going to continue on with the AOB template. We click OK for the address we want to inject the code on. And we're going to name it uh, Health 1. And Cheat Engine will find our array of bytes for us. And we've already been all through this. If you have not been through the entire series of the tutorials, then you are a little bit behind and need to go watch it okay so we're not really going to discuss what everything is doing because we've already done that so we're just going to go directly into writing the cheat okay first thing we need to do is compare out our heroes versus our enemies and we brought up that information via our dissect data which is right here but we're going to just look at our dissect data again we see that our heroes and our enemies are at offset 14 are different from each other Okay. The heroes are both one, the enemies are both two. So we can use either one of these two different groups to compare out. It's just on how you set it up. So CMP is the command we need to use for compare. I need you to compare the value at the 14 offset that RBX is pointing to. Okay, so remember, we brought up 
everything RBX is pointing to, okay, because of the base address being stored in RBX, okay. So all this is RBX, what it's pointing to at this point in time in the program. All right, so we know Eric and Dave are one, Al and Kit are two, so we can use either one of them. It doesn't matter. We do know that they're, they are integers because it told us they are integers. If I can get stuff out of my way here. They're integers because it labeled it four bytes, one and two. So that's very important to know if it's a float or four byte or whatever, to know if it's an integer or not. So if it's, it is an integer, we can just use its regular integer value, which we can do it either way. We can put number sign one, number sign two, which is integer two. Or we can use its hex values, which in this case, it'll be the same. One and two hex is also the same one and two decimal. They don't start changing until you reach 10. Sorry about that. So we're just going to use the hex value of 01. We know that Eric and Dave, which are our heroes, are 01. So we this is where it's important. We want it to compare to 1. If it is 01, we want it to do one thing. If it isn't 01, if they are no 01, we want it to do something different. So, we know Hal and Kit are both two at that offset, so jump if not equal to code. So, if it's anything other than one, they're going to jump over here to code. So, guess where we're going to put our cheat now? You guessed it, right here. Alright? Now, we could also done it the other way. We could also have it compare two. Compare to two. If you're two in this address, do one thing. So, in this case, we would want it to jump if equal to code. We need Hal and Kit to jump over our cheat. Okay? So, if we use their value instead, we would jump if equal to code. Since Hal and Kit are equal to 2, is it 2? Jump if equal to code? Yes, they are. So, it's going to jump here. Eric and Dave are not equal to 2. So, it's just going to ignore that and keep going down the list. Okay? That makes sense to everybody? So it really doesn't matter. You can do it either way as long as you're getting your condition right. But I'm going to use Eric and Dave jump if not equal to code. And we're going to manipulate the FPU stat. Without getting into it too deeply, we have, a, we have two different types of stacks that are being used in this particular assembly. Is we have the regular stack, which is the uh, integer stack and we have the FPU stack which is the float pointing unit stack usually your four bytes and your uh, regular bytes two bytes are all being used by the regular stack which uses the normal registries of ECX, uh, RCX, RAX all that mess and then we have the FPU stack which the XMM registries utilize a lot and that's what we're using here like I say I'm not getting into the, the hardcore mechanics of the FPU stack or this video is going to be about three hours long okay so I'm not going to do that so just know that when we use commands we are we're talking about using the FPU stack that we are using the float pointing instructions okay and you'll notice that when it has an F in front of it stands for float or floating point unit and it gives a command with it okay the most common one we're going to be using are FLD, FST, and FSTP. This loads a value onto the floating point unit stack and this stores a value that is on top of the FPU stack. And FSTP, it stores a value and then pops it back off the stack. The only difference between these two is that if the value is left on the stack, it's still going to be utilized. If you pop it back off the stack, that means you're completely done with the value and you need it back off the stack so it won't be manipulated anymore. Okay? And we're also going to be using here are the math functions. ABS, which is absolute value, but we're going to be using add. Most of the time we just use add, divide, or subtract or multiply things like that just regular math functions you can go read it I got this link in the description where you can see what these do but right here we're just going to be using F add which is add a floating point value okay so what happens we have to load a value onto the FPU stack if we use FLD 
it means float load we're going to load a value from an address onto the FPU stack so any F command we use will be dealing with the very top of that FPU stack okay so that's what we're going to do and what value do we want to manipulate we want to manipulate our health so our health is located at RBX plus 08 so I want to load the value and I'm going to use D word pointer to let them know that this is a float a D word RBX plus 08 Oops. And that's the proper way to do it you don't necessarily have to put D word pointer you can just do that but I like to go ahead and put that in there D word pointer it just tells the computer directly this is a D word okay we're using a float if we were using a double we would put Q word for quad word okay but for right now we're using just a regular D word integers and floats are a D word so what it's going to do is take our address every single one of them that's going through that opcode at that point in time if I match attack it's going to load Dave's 91 float onto the FPU stack so right now we're just looking at Dave 91 on top of the FPU stack I need to add a float value to that okay what I like to do is I like to create a separate location in memory to to store a, a particular value especially if it's a float or a double and what I do is I just name it something my float or something you can name it whatever you want to and register a symbol I usually just do that for good measure if you're just using it in this script and not somewhere outside of the script you don't really need to register a symbol but I usually do it for good measure so register the symbol and we unregister it when it turns off and we just want to put it somewhere where it's not being just somewhere out of the way where it's not interfering with code execution I usually just put it in between code and the address for the junk to allocated memory set. Remember, this location here is not part of new min. Anything above it is a part of new min all the way up to that label. Okay? So right here, it's not going to be interfering with code execution. So we're just going to store a specific value here. We're going to define a D word or declare a D word we want it to be a float and you can make it any number you want you can have it add three four or five or whatever I'm just gonna have it add two which is what I did in the last video so this symbol will be uh, it will be assigned a specific address in memory and that address that it's assigned to will be holding that float to okay so what we did is we loaded the 91 on top of the FPU stack and we want to F add F means we're still dealing with that floating point unit stack whatever's on top of it and we want it to add that to which is my float okay everybody with me on that right I'm not I'm not leaving anybody behind right all right so now it's going to add 2 to that 91 which will make that 93 right so now we need to clean up our mess that we just made on the stack so basically what we need to do we need it to store it back into our health address if we just did that and didn't store it back into our health address it's not going to do anything with our health okay so we're going to steal the value that's on top of the FPU stack we need you to store it and then pop it back off the stack we're done with that value we don't need it for anything else okay if we didn't put the pa that P on there which means pop it would leave that value on the stack and could kind of mess things up okay because it's still on top of the stack and could be utilized with another function somewhere down in the program so we need to clean the stack up and put it back into our health address okay so that's basically what it's doing and then we need it to jump or excuse me jump return we do not want it coming down here because if it comes down here then XMMO is just going to override what we just did and put a new value in there okay 
So make sure you jump over code and go just back to the very next dot code, which will be uh, this one right here. And then it'll go on and pick up where it left off, okay? And that's basically all I did. So remember, first thing it's going to do when you turn it on, it's going to place a jump to new men. So when the game gets to it, it's going to jump to new men. It's going to jump to new men. It's going to see our cheat and come to the very first instruction in new men, which is compare at RBX plus 14. Howling, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, Dave and Eric are both one. Howling Kit are two. Compare the value one at offset 14. If it does not equal one, I need you to jump to code. Jump over this cheat right here and just continue subtracting like normal. Dave and Eric are one at that location, so they are equal. So it's going to ignore that condition and come down here and perform this. I need you to load a float. I need you to load this value onto the FPU stack so load that value so it's going to take a look at that value which right now we're looking at Dave and load the 91 onto the FPU stack what else do you need me to do that value that you loaded onto the FPU stack I need you to add my float to it which I need to put brackets not parentheses load the value or add the value of my float alright so I see 91 is on the FPU stack what value is my float. It looks down here and says, okay, I see that's a value of float 2. So, okay, 92, 93. All right, what do you want me to do with that? I need you to take that value that's on top of the FPU stack, store it back into the address of my health, and pop it off the stack, and jump return and pick up where you left off. That makes sense to everybody. That's about as simple as I can make it. Okay, so let's go ahead and assign that to the current cheat table, and you can test it. We're going to put step nine here. We turn it on. Now Dave and Eric should be going up by two. Hal and Kit should still be going down like normal. And take a look. Dave is going up by two each time. Eric is going up by two each time. Hal is going down. Kit is going down. So if we restart game and autoplay, take a look. And the next button appears. So we successfully bypassed that. Now that's uh, a more thorough explanation than what you got in the last vid on using the FPU stack for floats and how you can manipulate them. It's just that simple. It's just going to manipulate whatever you place on top of the FPU stack. That's what float load does. Okay. And if we come down here, we can see here's the jump to new men. We can go to new men and follow it. And you can see it's comparing one. If it does not equal, it needs you to jump to this address, which is all the way down here. And that's where Hal and Kid are jumping to. Since Dave and Eric are one, it's ignoring that and coming down here and performing this. Loading the health on top of the FPU stack, adding the my float, which is two to that value and storing and popping it back off the stack into the health address and jumping back to here and picking up where it left off. Real simple, real easy. And I promised you I'll sh I'd show you another way. Remember the subtraction we discussed earlier? You can also have it do it that way. Let's just do it again, but we're going to use the same compare since we see that RBX it's not been manipulated anywhere before it gets to its writing point. That means that that same address right here is still in RBX, that same base address. So RBX is still pointing to all those offsets. So we can still use that same compare right here. So we'll just put uh, AOB injection at that address where it's subtracting. Inject, uh, let's put a uh, health two. This is another, a different one. And we can use that same CMP, RBX plus 14. And we can use enemies this time. Just use enemies this time. Jump if equal to code. Here, they're going to jump down. Hal and Kid are going to jump down here. And it's going to subtract. But for our guys, 
we're just going to copy all this right here and instead of subtracting for Dave and Eric we're going to put add add these two values together instead that's it so it's going to perform that addition instead of subtraction and return back where it needs to go add that to the current cheat table let's uh, get back over to the game let me put this down here let's restart the game just normally where everybody's just back at their base health and let's turn the uh, step 9 alt on this is where we just manipulated the subtraction turn that on and let's test it and look Dave and Eric are going up miscellaneous values that it would normally be subtracting instead of subtracting it it's just adding it and Hal and Kit are still going down like normal we can restart game and autoplay and take a look so we had the same type result two different ways there's always <clears throat> there's always multiple ways you can achieve the same goal and there's still other ways we could have done this I'm just not getting into them right now but I do hope this helps you all right guys I do hope this helps you and like I say I got plenty of videos on compares uh, I'll link those up in the upper right hand corner for you also I have the previous step number nine video that's still up uh, that's for the 32 bit step number nine so basically we just went over the exact same thing again you don't really we didn't really do anything different other than how we manipulated the value but I want to thank my partners these guys helped cheat the game keep running and if it wasn't for these guys we would have quit this a long time ago so I want to thank each and every one of these guys and today I'm giving away some game keys for them and um, I'm making a list of them they can just tell me which ones they want and they'll get the game key for it. So if you would like to become a partner, it only costs a dollar a month. Uh, any kind of donation uh, would greatly help us. And thank you all so much for doing that. Just coming out here, watching the video, placing a like on it also helps us out tremendously. And I thank you for doing that. If you're not subscribed, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We've got a lot more great content coming out for you. And I really want you to learn how to hack these games. You don't have to wait on trainers to come out. You don't need somebody else to explain to you how you can update screen somebody else's script for a game that you enjoy playing and, and using cheats for. You can learn how to do that yourself. So, you know, that's what we teach here. We teach you how to do these things yourself. That way you can hack these games yourself and just have a blast, all right? So come join us over at the Facebook group or at our Discord channel or our website. Well, we did renew the website for another whole year, so we got that. And I want to thank uh, all the guys helping me out with that, especially Sean May. Thank you for that, bro. But, uh, uh, well, hopefully we can get more things available to the website and get it more stable and running you know because I'd like to uh, really get that going so uh, hopefully we can do that alrighty guys I'm out of here you all take care keep on hacking most importantly please enjoy yourself that's really what it's all about you cheat the game fellas because believe me they don't mind cheating you all take care now